God. The most painful thing in life is to die without Christ. In Christ, He promised you that you will have life and have life in abundance. Everything in abundance. And one of the promises of abundance is inner peace. Even in the state of your nothing. You just have this peace. It's not influenced because of what you have. It's not influenced because of your position. It's not influenced because of your connection. It's simply influenced because of your being. You are inner being. Your identity in him. His indwelling power upon your life. Can't you thank God for his hand upon your life? Can't you thank God for his hand upon your house? Can't you thank God for his hand upon all that you do? The Bible says that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Oh God, I thank you, I honor you, I adore you. Thou alone is God and forever and ever thou remainest God because the Bible says that there was nothing made that was made without you. In John 1 3, he said that, it, that there was nothing made that was made, which means that nothing will have value when you are disconnected from it. Our life is worth nothing when you are not in it. And the Bible says, in him was life, and the light became the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. Even if there is so much darkness in our nation, the life of Christ in us is appointed to shine. Father, thank you for making my life to shine and to count. A shining life is a light that is counting. You are making them power. And you are living in assurance that I know who I am, I know where I'm going. Christ is alive within me, and because he's alive, he lives and I shall live. The Bible said, Because he lives, I shall also live. Lord, I bless your name. Thou art God from eternity to eternity. I shall live, my house shall live, my siblings shall live. We shall not just live a wasted life, we shall live a, a relevant life, a life that is counting in your plan and your purpose. We come to say thank you. We come to say thank you. A hymn I write and said, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. When, when, when Jesus is yours, there is an assurance that you are a blessing. Not only to yourself, you are a blessing to your generation. The Bible says, I will bless Abraham and make Abraham a blessing. God will not only bless you, will make you a blessing. You will not only just meet your need, you will meet the need of others. God will use you to flow into your generation. I'd like you to begin to say, God, thank you for blessing me. And thank you for the assurance that you will make me a blessing to my generation. I believe your word and I hold on to your word. I know what your word implies. I know what your word means. I know that in you I am blessed. In you, I am blessed. Every morning is relevant and counting on my head. In you, I am blessed. My house is blessed. And Father, you will make us a blessing to our generation, to the glory of your name, and to the purpose of your plans. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. One of the world that will not recover from on Sunday is that no matter the state of your life today, even when you are feeling that God has failed you, God has, has, been, has, has become too perfect to be imperfect in your time. The word says, God is too perfect to become imperfect. His promises does not fail. You may look at it with human body and weakness and say that God has failed here. He has never failed. He will never fail. 
it doesn't disappoint anyone he promises and does not fail in his promises lord i believe that you promise you make promises and do, does not fail in your promises i believe that your word is the candle of my life i believe that when your word is in my heart i will not stumble in life the psalmist said your word have i hid in my heart that i may not sin against you your word is alive in my spirit your word is working your purpose in my house your word is working your purpose in my destiny your word is working your purpose in my world lord i believe that you are the most powerful being no power can stop your power your authority is supreme no authority can stop your authority by faith oh god i ask you renew your hand upon my life renew your hand upon my home renew your hand upon my family in the name of jesus the Bible did not just say that you can heal. The Bible said you have healed. You are a healer. You are Jehovah Rothika. The Lord that healed me. Lord, I receive my healing by the blood of Jesus Christ. By my faith in your word. I ask my blood to be purified. I ask my bone to be healed. I ask my spirit to be healed. Oh God, by your authority and your word in my life, I command my prayer life to be revived. I command my hunger for the word of God to be revived. I command my faith to come alive. I command lord we thank you on sunday you are sure lord, that when we worship you you will bless us and when we serve you you will bless us you told us that you will make us to be in health you will bless our water you will bless our bread jesus the bible says is the bread of life you told us on sunday lord you also told us that our hand shall not miscarry opportunities and you said that no ability in us will be unproductive that was a power we lay our hands upon shall prosper lord this night remember your promises to this house Renew your word of covenant upon your house. As we serve you, bless us. As we pray to you, bless us. As we move in your name, bless us. Bless our body. Bless our blood. Bless our bones. Bless our organs. Bless our skills. Bless our ability. Cause anything we lay our hands upon to prosper. In the name of Jesus. Our hands shall not miscarry opportunities. Our ability shall not be barren. In the name of Jesus. Our skills shall not be barren. Our certificate shall not be barren. Our marriage shall not be barren. Our season shall not be barren. Our investment shall not be barren. In the name of Jesus. Father, you say you make our name a terror. As we serve you. Whosoever is calling our name forever. Father, let our name in your name become a terror to them. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lift your hands to heaven. And tell the Lord that you love him. Lord, I love you. 
love you I love you sweet holy spirit I love you Jesus Lola Mara I to go I to go I to go Jesus Lola Mara Oba Titi Live He bongana ba Jesus no muwe Bless you, sweet. Holy Spirit, our helper, our paracleto, our comforter, our peace and our joy. I call you these names because that is whom you are. You say you will not leave us comfortless. You will not leave us an orphan. You will come to us again. And you will send out the comforter and they will be with us and they will be in us. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to believe God if time will permit me to show you three scriptures and then we will pray with those three scriptures. I want to talk on faith activation. One of the three things we said that we shall fight the enemy of Christianity and enemy of God's people is unbelief. Unbelief. Another one is faithlessness. And the third one is ignorance. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, open up a very deep word. I read, through faith, we understand that the world, I love the way my, my version I'm using put it. My words were framed by the word of God through faith. I, through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. Blessed memory led by Idahosa after he built the faith cathedral in Benin and it was to dedicate it and he said this do you care to know the cost of this building and everybody was expecting to know how much million that building cost and they said the cost of this whole building you are seeing is faith. Did you hear me? He wanted to teach on faith. But he said to them, the cost of this whole building you are seeing is faith. When I heard that word in one of his um, memory clips, I began to look at my life. I reflected on this cathedral. I, I reflected on my marriage. I reflected on where I am. I reflected on missions that we go every year. Ask me how much is your annual budget? And I will tell you now, the annual budget of this house is faith in God. The, old, the things that God cannot do are things that God has not promised. So the currency of kingdom life, the currency of Christianity is called faith. Are you here? Now, when you read further, 
or when you read verse 1 of Hebrews 11, it said, Now, which means faith was something else before now. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The first time the word of God will be born or create in you is hope. If you read Psalm chapter 1 verse 3, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves shall not dry, but whatever you do it shall prosper. It's giving you hope. Alright? It's giving you hope of God's presence and prosperity of your labor. So faith is a substance that bats your hope. If you don't have hope, you cannot operate faith. And what creates hope is the word of God in your spirit. So when you can read the word of God to see what God has done and what God can do, you will not be able to conceive faith, to conceive hope. And so faith cannot rise. Are we here? That's why the Bible said in First Corinthians that a, a, a natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Neither does he know them. Because they are spiritually designed. So faith is a spiritual force. Faith is the move of God in your spirit man. Are we here? When the, the Bible said in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. And he spoke to me and the word entered me and stood me upon my feet. When you are so weak, so confused, so devastated, so impoverished in life. Reach out to your Bible. Hold your Bible. Start reading your Bible. Even if it's Genesis 1.1. In the beginning was the world. And the world. Okay. No. In the beginning. God created. Sorry. That is John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning. God created. The heavens. And the earth. And verse 2 say. And the earth. Was without form. And void. And darkness. Was upon the surface of the earth. Every problem of a man can look like darkness in Genesis chapter 1. Are we here? Every area you see spot, void, disorder. You see spot with that form, disorder. For, I mean, when you see situation that like void, which means it's like I have no value here. Anything that is void is things that have no value. And anything that has no value cannot be attracted to anything. It cannot connect any value. But when they say it was without form, it means that it lack orderliness. Alright? It lack orderliness. That was how God made the world he created. Verse 1 says he is the one that created it. Verse 2 says it was made in the order it was not created. And a stranger was inhabiting it. You may not know that the problem of man and woman, whether you call it sickness or anything, first and foremost is spiritual. Are you here? It's first and foremost spiritual. Call it any title, call it any name. That is why the first strategic action you have to take when you have a problem is to go spiritual. Praise God. To intentionally engage God in prayers and connect God into it. And you should also understand that the intention of the enemy behind your problem is to steal your joy. Are we here? Once the enemy succeeds in stealing your joy, he can do you anything. That's why the psalm, the, uh, the, one of the pastors, Job, says, even in this state that I am, I cannot divorce God. For I know that my Redeemer lived. There was no children. The wife he had was tired of him, wishing him die. 
nothing around him was counting anymore but himself was counting in faith in his mind that as long as he's breathing his future is alive do i have a, do i have a witness in the house so let nothing in life don't just say i'm tired when you are tired you will die and when you die the war continues don't just say i'm tired always say it like david i will not die i will live do not begin to blame issues stay on the word of god which will ignite hope in you and then begin to manifest faith of your hope come on we here faith is the currency by which you buy and take delivery of the promises of god are we here faith does not operate in the reality of life it operates in the reality of god who created life is god real come on do i have somebody here is god real if god is real his promises are real and uh, whatever he promised is able to do so the word of god in verse 3 of hebrews says through faith through faith through this supernatural force because we have tried to find out how the world was created we couldn't define it we couldn't find it but we get to understand the narration that there's a being called god who created the heaven and the earth are we here he didn't create them with what we did think that are real and do appear he created them from the invisible force so he created for himself it was his inner motion his god the whole world was present in him that's why the bible still promised that he will destroy the current war and the current heaven are we here and the, the uh, john said and i saw a new heaven and a new earth coming out from god come on are we here coming out from god and the bible said to them that receive him he gave them power to become his extension come on are we here what you are born to possess can come out from you where you can hold on to god you you know your healing can come out from you are you here your marriage can come out from you your children can come out from you your cars can come out from you your career can come out from you if god is in you and you have the faith of god in you you can create your future in your mind that is the whole bible so how do we create it how we create it is how god created it in verse 3 of genesis chapter 1 the bible say god say let there be light at this time next week we enter the 21 days this the, the, the second section is proclamation are we here you start proclaiming the word of god to your situation proclamation i am so broke but i have needs but there's no cash in my hand let there be money and the devil said you lie said the devil i am speaking the word for the for the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the lord for this same jesus commanded peter go there any piece of cash open the mouth and bring up money and pay our bills come out here yeah by miracle god can supply money by labor god can favor you with money come on are we here all you need to do is to be a bible student operating the faith of god and things will be working in your life they're saying they're going to throw you out tomorrow and god are not giving you alternatives god you are not an author for confusion did that be divine intervention cause a problem to pro to my enemies who want to throw me out of the place that I, you have made me to occupy you can use faith positively you can use faith and delay some satanic judgment on your life you can use faith to enforce the word of god let me close because of time hebrew chapter 9 verse 14 
I began praying this scripture this morning. I told my wife and I said, I have prayed Hebrews 9 for 10. You should intentionally begin to engage God on some scriptures. You know, Hebrews 9 for 10 is so strong. So strong that you can kill any witch that have existed before you were born. Come on, are we here? I know many of you will be interested now. You have heard about witch. But I am not after those witches. But I want I am after your dominion and after your manifestation. Praise God. When you switch into the covenant, you will begin to manifest the appointment. And by the grace of God, this month, through next month, you will manifest your appointment. Amen. Did I hear you say amen to God? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14. Are you there? How much more? Come on, someone say, how much more? How much more? Now, Nye was giving a narration of what other sacrifices can do. But here he entered a higher level. Of a higher sacrifice. How many of you here still remember and believe that the blood of Jesus is a sacrifice? Okay, it's a sacrifice of atonement. Atonement is to plot out what the evil people have pro programmed, projected, and plotted. It's a sacrifice of substitution that the death meant for you can be exchanged. Come on, are we here? It's a sacrifice of redemption. Meaning that the cause on you and the debt on you can be taken away. Are we here? Now, it's a sacrifice of healing, purification, in righteousness. These are the things that the blood of Jesus can bring atonement, substitution, redemption, healing, and atonement. And the Bible says that the blood of Jesus is the spirit and life of God. Okay? The blood of Jesus is what? The spirit and life of God is called eternal spirit. Someone shout it. Now, every spirit that causes sickness around you and around I are spirit. Eternal spirit is a spirit that is superior to the spirit. We call it the principal spirit. When it's present, every other spirit shall bow. You call it spirit of Maren. You call it spirit of Obanje. You call it spirit of witchcraft. You call it spirit of courtism. I believe in the total God. There's some prayer that the church is praying today that has no connection to faith in God. Anyone doing me die. When you finish, you get angry. You start fighting. You need knowledge first. Last week, I told you that knowledge is strength. And when you ride on the wings of knowledge, you become more powerful. This is not a time to pray prayer of ignorance and the prayer of fear in the name of faith. The Bible said that the prayer of faith in God shall heal the sick. Come on, are we here? This is what God is capable of doing. This is what God has promised that we do. This is what God is doing right now. So look at the scripture. How much more if every other spirit and sacrifice, somebody said, I'm sick, bring fish. Somebody said, he's sick, bring goat. And they walked. Are we here? In a lesser level of the spirit. Then he begins to say here, how much more shall the blood of Christ, somebody shall blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, that's the emphasis there. Eternal spirit is God. It has no beginning, it has no end. It does not die, it does not grow weak. You can't corrupt it. You can only make it to be dormant when you begin to live ungodly life and unholy life. And you live unholy life not by going into adultery and engagement, by your unbelief. And you are faithless talking. You are reckless attitude. You see, God is a sacred God. 
You have to be so mindful. So mindful. If not that because we are in human nature, I would have asked some of you when you are walking, walk like this, so that people will ask you what is wrong with you. Say, I am walking with God. He doesn't want me to talk. Praise God. I don't have time today to tell you a narration of um, a man that has three sons and you know that one of the children were parrots. So he decided to tie the mouth of all of them because of one of them. He said that one who talks can make all of them talk and forget the instructions. So he, he stitched their mouth. He said they should not talk until they get to where they're going. And when they get to where they're going, the servant should open their mouth to talk. Praise God. Now, that is where our faith has an issue. We talk faithless base words and weaken the authority and power of God. The same mouth by which you say anything you like, the same mouth you pray to God. So, you can't be magnifying the devil and be magnifying God at the same time. God will only respond so what is predominant? Christianity is not something you fake. Have you not read in the Bible? Toward the later time, the love of God among many will was cold. Many people you were thinking they're Christian, they will so disappoint you. So no one should be your model. God should be your model. But he did it now because there's something in him that has not yet died. Are we here? It has not yet died. We need to get things that are trying to come alive to die. Look at this so we can start praying and go. How much more shall the blood of Christ shout again blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit Offered himself without spot to God. Can you become spotless? Can you just live in one week pleasing God and displeasing no, displeasing the world around you? Can you spend just one week alone if you used to smoke and refuse to smoke? After one week, that appetite will naturally die. Are we here? Some things you are struggling with, recognize them and tell that thing, and this 21 day that is coming up, I place you in this altar. You will not, you will not identify with me after this fast. I see yourself in a scale of progressive Christianity in the next few months. It will amaze you what you will become. Come on out here. So this is where he was spotless. That was why his blood was so effective. To the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. God cannot accept every sacrifice of prayer. You can't pray to God in the midst of sin. So he went on to say here, Poach your conscience. Somebody say, Poach your conscience. So, in, in the second section of our fast, we will be dealing with this scripture and we'll be dealing with our conscience. He said, There's some, some record, some memory your conscience has kept. Your conscience has kept some bad dreams. Are we here? He has kept some bad events, he has kept some narration and story people told you. Say the Bible says, be angry and sin not. And they say, let not the sun go down. Before. So you can hear anything, but you must not register it. Don't hold anything in your conscience outside God's word. God will not work. Your conscience is where the problem is. In the church, you are a Christian. Outside the church, you are a different person. When you are in the home, this under my marriage, the man talked 10, you talk 25. Are we here? It, it, does, it can't take you anywhere. 
it's your conscience your conscience is only obligated expected to hold the promises of god where faith can operate the faith can only work where the word of god is alive and working john 15 verse 7 if you abide in me and my word abide in you you shall ask anything based on the abiding word and it shall be done for you come on are we here so he said put your conscience from dead works to serve the living god you must have had the story in our in our family slaves were killed in our family people die at this age in our family people don't marry successfully and it registered in your heart are we here listen you are believing dead works what jesus came to do is not work jesus came to destroy the works and to give you life christianity is life and when you receive those life you will begin to count come on are we here your faith start operating you start bypassing all hurdle you can become rich you can go abroad where no man has ever gone in your family your case can become different come on are you here so uh, that is where i want you to see it today and god helping us i want you to believe it that everything you are running your life with is simply called dead works disconnect from the history connect to the redemption you have been redeemed you have been delivered if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken someone say quicken you are mortal body so by the word of god you can wake up healed i i don't know why i get more miracles on phone than here maybe because you see me all the time somebody have been down somewhere in this country and i just the holy spirit just flagged the person's name in my heart yesterday in my office i picked my phone and i called very far and the voice was like weak and they said i had this situation i had this situation i said let us pray we prayed this afternoon i called to check he was driving what happened he said god has done it so i don't know whether it's familiarity but i want you to know that the god of this altar still heals are we here still heals we have to keep the law we have to keep the word and we have to keep the faith i close psalm 23 and verse 6 and he said if you check that scripture and see what that scripture contains it will amaze you verse 5 says he has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies all right so there, there's no access to get to the table that table is your table of treasure if you think that you are going to succeed without battle and without war you are joking god sometimes will use the righteous to show his power when should god put something for you in a place where enemies are surrounding and the bible say he he anointed my head with oil and my cup run it over you don't need anybody to tell you now that he now have access to the table through the power of the oil the word of god in you is strong enough to make way for you nobody who is too powerful who must have made a vow and say you will never get there tell the person that your pastor said is a liar by the grace of god and faith in god you will get there i didn't hear amen yeah. then in verse six he now declare everybody declare okay surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life surely 
Get on your feet. Surely. Go ahead and say it if you know it. Stop proclaiming God's word you have not believed. I see you wake up in the morning after your prayers. You lift up your hands to God. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The Bible says how he anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And they went everywhere doing good. When you believe that word, you will begin to connect divine magnet. Good things will pursue you. Evil things shall flee from you. Lift your hands and begin to honor the name of the Lord. Thank God for the spirit of faith and the living word of God. Thank God for the word of faith that we have proclaimed. The word of faith is the antidote to the word of fear. The scripture says, Open this word of faith which we preach. The word of God is what God hears. Lord, thank you for the word of faith at work in me. At work in me. Thank you for your word that is working mighty things in me. Your word is working at mighty things in me. Le sukapata, ile depo sukapa, le zorobo shakata, inane kata, yanda labadoga. Your mighty word is working at mighty times in my life. Your mighty word is working at mighty miracles, mighty healing in my life. Your mighty word is making uh, mighty ways in my life. Lord, I believe that by your word, you created the world. And so the world is subject to your word. And as, as, as long as your word is alive in me, the word around me is subject to me. Your word is subject. Your, the word around me is subject to me. Because they were made out of your word. And you live in me and I live in you. Therefore, in return on the world that is against your word for my life. Lord, I bind me. Like a part of your life. And nothing on the earth that is against your word for my life I bound like a boso kapa ikete kete ikakata ramananana ikele para tayadaga ikakapa yananda lezuka patata iraka yata sasa lesapaka lakata tata lakata ikapata yandala ikaka was where by God I don't plant that is growing in my body, growing in my house, growing in my family. It shall not start. I bind it. I uproot it. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Now begin to ask the Lord. Watch my conscience for the memory of dead works and my story in the history in the ancestral power in the altar in my family lineage that the father is contrary to your word that is working against your mandate in my life lord they are called dead works i buy them i cast them out i bind them i cast them out i cast them out i cast them out they shall not star over and against me every demon that is killing children every power that is killing people in my foundation by the blood of Jesus by his substitutionary death by his redemptive power I declare I shall live and not die
purge my conscience purge my conscience from fear purge my conscience from the terror of fear purge my conscience from dead works purge my conscience from fear of death from fear of unknown from fear of poverty from fear of rejection from fear of delay father purge my conscience I delete every consciousness of dead works and nothing that has no eye, that have no ear, that have no leg, that have no hand, that have that have terrorized my being. I cast you out by the blood of Jesus. I cast you out of my spirit in the name of Jesus. The Bible said that God, I give him a name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. I confront the terrors. I confront their altar. I confront their kingdom. I bind them out of my ways. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, two more prayer points. Look at this. It will take the spirit to expel the spirits. It will, it will take the spirit to expel spirits. The spirit is the eternal spirit. Are we here? It, it takes the eternal spirit, eternal spirit, which is God's power and life in man. To delete, expel, eject satanic oppression by satanic spirit in man. Somebody up close your eyes and lift up your right hand. I receive in me the eternal spirit of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the spotless blood of Jesus. And I care by a spell. Every ancient spirit, ancestral spirit, satanic spirit, witchcraft spirit, marine spirit, spirit of sickness and affliction, hereditary spirit, I cause you to your roots. Every hold you have. In my body, in my spirit, in my life, I disconnect you. I bind you. In the name of Jesus, I set your fire. Lakata, right now, I release my soul. I release my soul. What Jesus has done for my life is eternal. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Now somebody shout. Surely. Shout it like an army. Shout it like you mean it. I am a carrier. Of divine goodness. And divine mercy. Every day of my life. I shall attract God's goodness. I shall attract God's mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive the spirit of faith. I burn the spirit of fear. My spirit, wake up. My spirit, wake up. Christ is alive. Receive life. In Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every affliction in my body, I disconnect you, I bind you, I bind you, disappear right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am here and I am appointed. To enjoy divine goodness, prosperity, divine heritage, 
we strong hell in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Take up the communion. Today we remember the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. I told you that his blood attuned for our sins and for everything against us. Atonement is what plot out or root the root of evil. So he atoned for our sin. He substituted our place. Because the Bible said in, in Psalm 23 that we were destined to hell, but he restored our soul. So he, he, he substituted our destination to hell by choosing to go there to free us. So every evil you are expected to carry, this communion will reverse it. He redeemed us from spell. To redeem is to repurchase. He redeemed us. He repurchased us from powers that have purchased us. We can no longer be slaves in the hand of things we don't know. Are we here? Then he delivered us from enemy that appears stronger than us. And the Bible says he saved us. Praise God. And all this he did through the eternal spirit. You know, when he died, the spirit which is the presence of God that governed the whole creation in Eden came out of him and then began to saturate everywhere and, and open the holy of holies so that humanity can have access to God's presence. So what he did was to give you access to God. Today, we remember the mystery behind his death. And he says, as often as you do this, you remember what I died for. These are the things he died for. So Lord, it's not by power, it's not by mind, it's by your spirit. My, 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 my spirit is full of faith. I consecrate this communion and I declare that it shall be a total representation of what you have told me that Jesus went to the cross to do for humanity. Everyone that comes to take this by faith, I believe you that they are returning home strong, healed, and they are going to wake up with a different state of life. And thank you for the miracle that we follow this meeting. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, can we do this very quickly? Eat it. Remember me. This is my blood. Pour out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my body broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my blood pour out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my body, this is my body broken, 
broken for you and as you eat it and as you hear remember me remember me this is my blood this is my blood pour out for you and as you drink it and as you drink it remember remember me this is my body this is my poor broken broken for you and as you eat it and as you eat remember me remember me this is my blood this is my blood pour out for you pour out for you and as you drink it and as you drink yeah, remember me all of you connected to this meeting through the social media just do the same thing you see all do here get a wife of bread and get a non-alcoholic wine and just connect what you've heard me say to them in prayers of faith and minister it to your family god will give you the same result uh we also like you to, to know that your you your are, you are offerings and seed are very important to power our mandate god has given us a vision and we have planned to accomplish the visions and we will go into nations of the earth this year so we call for your support the 21 days fasting and prayer we also start on monday 22nd through june through june 11 um there will be hourly prayer here and we have quite a number of intercessors who will be standing the gap hourly we needed uh, a support for welfare to at least take care of them and also power the diesel by which we'll be broadcasting to you. So send us your seed. And those of you in the house, what I'm saying to them, I'm saying to you, we need your contribution towards the fasting program. God bless you.